Why is it that I end up doing the most stupidest time-wasting challenges I can possibly do for videos? Okay, today, or I guess a few months ago now, let's not talk about my upload schedule. I thought it'd be a great idea to speedrun collecting every single obtainable hat in Stardew Valley. There are 93 hats in total for me to collect, and hopefully this can double as a guide of how to quickly obtain some of the rarer hats. I'll be using the same timing method as perfection, so I'm allowed to pause the timer for bathroom breaks, food breaks, and to sleep. Speaking of perfection, I'll need to obtain perfection status to collect the hat later on, so the start of the run is just going to be a perfection speedrun. I don't want this to be a perfection speedrun 3.0 video, so I'll be skipping a lot of the basic information and overall strategies I use to acquire items for perfection. If you want to know how I do that, you should go check out those other videos I've made. Here, I'll just be recapping the full seasons until perfection. And what better way to start than planting crop circles? My first spring saw me planting the 15 starting parsnips, gifting Pam on her birthday, and unlocking the community center. For summer, I went out to gather the summer forageables and planted enough wheat to get farming level 2 for sprinklers. Fall, I hibernated until the 26, collected all the forge on the map, and then continued to winter. Yeah, the first three seasons I didn't do much. The goal was to get to winter ASAP. Because in winter, I would start winter tilling. Winter tilling works the exact same way as clay farming, but instead, you get winter forgeables, which happens to be worth four times more than clay. The downsides to this is you really can only do it on the beach, and you have to wait until winter. Doing a full clear of the beach nets around 31,000 gold profit. I did this a majority of winter until I could afford four things. The bus repair, the greenhouse, enough starfruit seeds for the greenhouse, and materials to create preserve jars to make starfruit jelly in. So in spring year two, I gathered all the hardwood needed to repair the boat and continue growing starfruit in the greenhouse. Summer was more the same with harvesting starfruit turning it into jelly, but on the third week I got the prismatic jelly quest from the special orders board and completed it for monster musk. Finally, in fall I hit farming level 10, so I sold my stockpile of starfruit jelly now worth 40% more, netting me 400,000 gold. With this money, I bought all the salads and coffees I'll need for the rest of the run and made my way down to floor 120 in the mines in preparation for a skull caverns run. In winter, I started grinding for the missing dwarf scrolls to be able to buy bombs from the dwarfs to do the Skull Caverns run, which ended up happening on the 3rd, and after 180 floors, I ended up with 433 iridium ore, 4 prismatic shards, and a bunch of gold and iron for quality sprinklers. After fixing the boat, the very next day it was finally time to go to Ginger Island. As per usual, I collected all the golden walnuts I could, repaired the house, and set up camp on Ginger Island for the next few months. Oh, and I guess since this is a hats video, I should mention that I finally got my first hat, the Squire's Helmet. Well, second, I did get the copper pan once I removed the boulder, but who counts that as a hat? Spring year three was just more starfruit harvest with the addition of kegs this time. I was also opening up golden coconuts for the fossilized skull and managed to get the coconut helmet pretty early on. In summer, I finished crafting all the kegs I would need to process the starfruit I was growing. And fall, I finished up collecting the dragon's teeth I needed for the obelisk and it opened up Key's walnut room. Winter saw the completion of the majority of monster eradication goals, as well as collecting the omni geodes from ghosts to complete the museum. And in spring, year 4, I opened up the newly acquired omni geodes and completed most of the museum. In summer, I did the wizard's quest to unlock the ability to build obelisks and caught my very first fish on the file. Summer ended with another Skull Caverns deep run looking for Omni Geodes, resources, and if I'm lucky, a few new hats. In fall, I reached fishing level 3 to buy crab pots so I can level up my skill this way. A little sussy buddy showed up on the island farm while I was farming Summer Forge for forging XP to get level 10 forging. In spring year 5, I grew all the crops I would need for full shipment, polyculturer, master crafter, and the gourmet chef achievements. I also finally went to the egg festival to get a few strawberry seeds and to demolish the egg hunt to get the straw hat. I started gifting NPCs and fishing for all the fish in summer. In fall, I picked up a few new hats, those being the top hat from the casino and the fedora from the Stardew Valley Fair. In winter, I finished the archaeology tent for the ostrich incubator and visited the night market for the exclusive fish as well as to buy the cone hat. The entirety of year 6 can be summed up with gifts. A lot of gifts. All I was waiting on was getting everybody up to max friendship points and a few artifacts. 
That said, in winter, I went to the Festival of Ice to pick up a missing rare crow and to get the hat from winning the fishing contest, after which I immediately fished for the frog hat to get this hideous hat off me. In year 7, I once again gifted everybody their rabbit's foot on their birthdays for the final time, as well as I chose to marry Emily specifically for her 14 heart hat later. Year 8 is finally the last year of perfection. Now that I have all the cooking and crafting recipes from the NPCs, I could finish the Master Craft and the Gourmet Chef achievements. And with getting the final few artifacts I needed for the museum, I was finally done with perfection. With the most time intensive hat out of the way, it was time to gather the rest of the hats. I made my way down to the Hat Mouse who sells you a new hat for each achievement you have. There are a total of 30 achievements and only 3 of them are not required for perfection. Those being a big help, polyculture, and monoculture. After buying all the hats from Hat Mouse, I went to the island nut room and bought Key's hat. The next set of hats I wanted to get out of the way were the tailored hats. There are 30 hats gotten from tailoring. They all need a bunch of different items to make. Thankfully, I'm a hoarder, so I had the ingredients to craft the majority of the hats. I tailored 20 of the 30 hats on the first visit, and I had the materials to make all but two of the remaining hats. But I didn't want to go back to the sewing machine until I had everything, so instead, I got Emily's 14 heart cutscene hat next. After, I started doing volcano runs for the pirate's hat and the ostrich egg, both of which are found from rare chests in the volcano. And with going through the volcano for weeks on end, I did remember to buy the pink bow from the resident volcano dwarf. With two weeks of nothing but disappointment, I finally visited the Adventurers Guild to pick up the hats I got from the monster eradication goals. Yeah, I never bothered picking them up until now. The Key's Fruit Quest quest showed up on Key's quest board, so I only had a limited amount of time to make Key's mask, and while I was there I tailored 6 more of the hats. Once I returned to doing more volcano runs, it only took a few more days to get the pirate's hat. Luckily, it only took a few more days after getting the pirate's hat to find the ostrich egg. And with getting the last items I needed for tailoring, I tailored the 4 remaining hats. And with all the tailoring hats out of the way, it was time for everybody's favorite hats, the RNG hats. Ah, uh, wait, never mind, I lied. I had to buy the three hats from the birdie NPC on the island, as well as I had to farm for more Omni Geodes to buy the three hats from the desert merchant. But now, now it's time for the RNG hats. Joking aside, a majority of these hats aren't that bad to obtain, and some even have ways to cheese them to make farming for them super simple. Out of all 93 hats, I only have 8 left to collect. Those being the 4 from Skull Caverns chests, the red, blue, and dark cowboy hats, along with the white turban. And probably the 4 most notorious rare hats, the mushroom hat dropped by mushroom trees at a 1 in 100 drop rate, the garbage hat dropped from trash cans at a 1 in 500 drop rate, the tiger hat dropped from tiger slimes at a 1 in 1000 drop rate, and finally, the living hat with a devastating 1 in 100,000 drop chance from weeds. At this point, the video is going to become more of a guide on how to get the remaining hats in the most efficient ways possible. There isn't much storytelling to give beyond this point. I have reached an endgame farm that everybody kind of sets out to build, except for the fact that there's zero decorations, the farm is uh, a complete mess with trees, there's buildings and chests everywhere. You know, it would be depressing if I had my life in a video game more together than my actual life. Give me a break. Anyways, let's start with the easier half of the eight hats to get, the Skull Caverns hats. To get the red, blue, and dark cowboy hats, as well as the white turban, the best way to do it is to maximize your chance of getting chest floors. These floors can happen once a player is past floor 9, and it has a base chance of 1% of showing up. This chance is affected by both luck stats, foods, and daily luck. Each point of a luck buff adds 1% to your odds, and daily luck can affect it by minus to plus 1%. The other part of making this as efficient as possible is bringing as many ladders as you can, as the faster you can go down floors, the more chest floors you will find in a given day. To get staircases in bulk, the easiest way is to duplicate jades in the crystallariums and trade them to the desert merchant on Sundays for a staircase each. And once you have enough staircases, it's just about laddering down and hoping for chest floors to spawn and the hats to be given. This also happens to be the best way to get auto petters for those who didn't sell their soul to Joja. On a small note, you can just reset the full day by exiting to the menu if you don't get anything you wanted, saving the staircases and the resources spent on the day. For the last four hats, I'll go in the order I find the easiest to the hardest. So up next, the mushroom hat. 
For the mushroom hat, you really only need to have the key nut room open. The mushroom hat is dropped from fully grown mushroom trees, and getting them to naturally spawn takes forever, so buying mushroom tree seeds from Key Shop is the fastest way of getting them. I recommend buying 5 to 10 tree seeds and planting them in the grid right next to the farmhouse. And make sure to use tree fertilizer to speed up the growth. 5 to 10 tree seeds sounds like it's way too little if the hat is a 1% drop chance, and it would be if you could only chop down the trees once. Unlike some RNG in the game, the mushroom hat is not tied to the tree itself on a given day, but the RNG of the game the moment you chop down the mushroom tree, which is not practical for a human to do consistently. Alright, in casual terms, that just means if you chop down a tree, whether it's with a bomb or an axe and get no hat, exit the title, reload the save, and try again, and just repeat that until you get the hat. Alright, next up, the tiger's hat. This one works just like the mushroom hat where we'll be abusing the exit the title to mass genocide tiger slimes. First up, you gotta build a slime hutch. Next, acquire a couple tiger slime eggs that can be gotten from either killing tiger slimes or from fish ponds filled with lionfish. Hatch them until you have at least one male and one female slime and breed them until all 20 slime spots are filled. Make a fenced area at the entrance of the hutch and corral all the slimes into it. Now sleep to save the file and begin the genocide. Just like the mushroom hat, you'll wake up, kill all 20 slimes. If the hat doesn't drop, exit the title, load up the save again, and try again. The slimes will be back and you'll have another 20 chances to get the hat. Third up is the trash can hat. Sadly, there's not really a strategy for this one. You just have to go into town every day, check the trash cans, and pray that you get it. There is a third party tool called the Stardew Valley Predictor, which can tell you which day you get the trash can hat on. I just prefer not to use these for speedruns because I think they take away the value of the run. Last but not least, and probably the reason why a lot of you even clicked on this video in the first place, the single most rarest item in the game, the Living Fiber Hat, which is a 1 in 100,000 drop chance from weeds. I avoided doing this run for quite a while purely because of this hat. With the thought to be fastest farming method clocking in about 20 hours of grinding fiber on floor 81 of the mines to get this hat, I was not about to waste almost a day of my life doing that. But thanks to some random chatter, they gave me the idea that would revolutionize farming for the living hat, making a 20 hour grind into about a three hour grind on average. Ginger Island is a place that is an outside greenhouse, meaning winter never happens. It can also have weeds spawn on the farm. So what happens if we just let the weeds spread and take over the farmland? You have to sleep about a full year and remove the golden clock on your farm if you want to be able to do this. But if you let the weeds spread after a full year, your farm will begin to look like this. Now it's time for the fun part. Make a weed maze that circles the two bridges that gives you enough room to run and place bombs to destroy all the weeds in one go instead of using the scythe to clear all the weeds every single reset. The hat does drop when using bombs. The only requirement for the hat to drop from a weed is the destruction of it. The method doesn't matter. Just like the other two hats, if you don't get it after clearing all the weeds, reset the day and do it again. If the farm is fully covered, you'll be breaking about 600 weeds a reset. And if you're fast about it, you can do a full rotation in about 45 seconds. You'll be breaking about 13 weeds every second with this method. 13 chances for the hat every single second, making it by far the fastest method of obtaining the living hat. Small things to note for those who try this, after about 20 to 30 resets, sleep to the next day without breaking any weeds. You'll start breaking the weeds on the same RNG values after a certain point, and sleeping a day changes this. If you ask why don't you cover the farm in fiber seeds, wouldn't that be faster and easier? Yes, it would, if the hat could drop from fiber plants but sadly, it can. It specifically drops from the destruction of weeds. I got pretty lucky in this run, and only after about an hour and a half of resetting, I got the living hat completing the run. Thanks for watching until the end. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video, which hopefully won't take over a month to release this time. Anyways, hope you have a great rest of your day, and peace.